Throughout the last century, students' grades were often calculated by averaging out their scores on their assignments. Many schools still rely on this system today. However, just recently, many schools are rejecting that system because it has a couple problems that hinder learning. First of all, if a student is missing an assignment or gets a zero on an assignment, this can hurt his or her grade a lot. Let's say you have four papers that you had to write for your English class, and your grades for those papers were 75%, 70%, 80%, and 0% due to a missing assignment. Even though you were clearly writing on average at a C level, your grade for writing would actually be an F when the grades were averaged out. A second problem with averaging grades is that depending on what point value is given to assignments by the teacher, a student who actually has pretty low reading and writing skills, but does their homework every day, might actually have higher grades than someone who is a really good reader and writer, but forgets to turn in many of their assignments. In this case, Grades are giving you feedback about your behavior, but they aren't giving you clear feedback about what you need to work on in that class to improve in your English skills. To be clear, good behavior, that is doing your assignments when they are given and doing them on time, is really important for doing well in school and being successful in your future career. The problem is that grading behavior rather than English skills isn't really helping you know what you need to work on to improve in your English skills. The final problem with averaging grades is related to the last one. If we average assignments together, it is really unclear what skills you need to practice to improve in your English skills. If you looked at your progress report and simply saw that you need to raise your English test scores, it might be confusing to know what you really need to study to raise your grade. Wouldn't it be more helpful if you could look at your report card and see that you needed to work specifically on understanding symbolism in literature? or that you are strong in writing thesis statements, but you need extra help in writing clear topic sentences in your paragraphs. Most report cards don't give you that kind of feedback. Now, before I explain a grading system that can help solve many of these problems, I do want to briefly state that some teachers do an excellent job creating assignments and grading scales that reduce or eliminate many of these problems, even if they are still averaging grades. Teachers are generally trying to do what is best for their students in whatever system they choose, so I'm not trying to be negative about your other classes. However, I'm trying something different because I believe it is what will work best for the learning in my classroom for my students. In order to give you clear feedback about what you need to work on and increase the focus on good learning rather than good behavior, I am going to use a system called standards-based grading. This is a system that is increasingly being used across this country to help students improve their learning. The first thing you need to understand about standards-based grading is that the state of Indiana has specific learning standards or targets that they have written for each class. Currently, we are using the Common Core English Standards for Grade 10. Learning standards help teachers know what to cover in their class and outline the type of skills students should have by the time they finish the course. For our class, these learning targets also align to the type of skills you are tested on for the end of course assessment. So if you have mastered those skills in our class, you should be able to ace the ECA. Learning targets are there to make sure that the education you receive is just as good as students in any other school in the country. They are there to hold me responsible to teach at a level that will help you be successful in your future college and career work. The Common Core Learning Standards are divided into five categories, reading informational texts, reading literary texts, speaking and listening, language, and writing. Each category has a group of more specific standards that fall under it. It is nearly impossible to work on all the standards at once, so each nine weeks we will work in a, in a smaller, more specific group of standards. Instead of entering assignments into my gradebook, I will be entering the standards we are working on at the time. The specific standards will fall under each category. Each category will carry a specific weight. The reading and writing standards are weighted more heavily because the ECA focuses on reading and writing more than any other skill. For example, let's say that in the first nine weeks we begin working on semicolons. Under the Common Core Standards, the learning target for semicolons falls under the language category. 
Whenever we work on semicolons, I will give you a place on the worksheet to write down the standard for semicolons. This will help you remember what assignments you can turn in for your standard grade on semicolons. Every three weeks before your progress report comes out, we will spend a day or two of class time to work on evaluating our progress with the standards we are currently working on. What you will be responsible to do is to fill out some paperwork reflecting on your grade. Using the following rubric, you will inform me how you are working on semicolons and explain to me why you think you deserve that grade for that standard. Then you will turn in some of your work on semicolons as evidence of how you are doing with that standard. This is why it is important to keep track of the standard on your assignments, so you can know what you can use as evidence for the standards we are working on. After you hand in your reflections on how you are meeting the standard and sample of your work on that standard as evidence, I will decide on a grade for your progress report for each standard we have been working on in class. I might use the grade you assigned yourself, or I might raise or lower it if I didn't think you were quite right about the grade you chose. Then all of your standard grades will be averaged together to compile your grade for the class. Let's look at a sample student gradebook. Okay, let's look at the gradebook that we have in front of us. This student has five uh, standards that they have been working on during this time period. They've been working on language standard 2A, which is on semicolons, reading literary text standard 1 on using text evidence, writing standard 1B on using counterclaims, speaking and listening standards 1C on posing questions within a discussion, and reading informational text standard 6 on identifying the author's purpose. You can see their grades there were 65% on semicolons, an 80% on using text evidence, a 95% on using counter claims, a 70% on posing questions, and an 85% on identifying the author's purpose. With the weighted grades, this averages out to a total grade in English as a 79%. You can see that the one thing they really need to work on is using semicolons um, and that their strongest skill is using counterclaims in their writing. So as a student, you can use your progress report to see exactly what you need to work on. And if I were this student, I would want to, in particular, be working towards improving my semicolons and, and then finding new assignments that show my improvement in that so that that grade can be replaced. Okay, now here's the cool part. Let's say that when we first started working on semicolons, you are not always sure how to use them. You kind of understand how they work, especially when I am explaining them, but you don't always know how to use them on your own. At the first progress report, you tell me that you are at a D level on semicolons based on how you understand them. But, by the time you get to the end of the first nine weeks, you are almost always getting the semicolon questions correct on your own and are occasionally using them correctly in your writing. So, for that progress report, you tell me that you are now at a B on semicolons. At that point, the B will simply replace your D. The D no longer exists in the gradebook because I know that you are now at a B on semicolon usage. And, you can continue to improve into the next nine weeks. So if you are at an A on semicolons by the end of the second nine weeks, you will have an A rather than a B or D. This means that if you ever want to raise your grade in the class, you simply need to redo assignments that address the particular standards you are struggling with, and then show me that improvement as proof. You don't need to do extra credit, and it will be very clear on your report card what specific skill you need to work on in order to raise your grade. And because no grade is permanent, if you start out with low grades on a particular skill, it doesn't mean you're stuck there. You can always work your way out of it. Now, let me answer a couple concerns you might have about this system. First, if you no longer get grades for individual assignments, what happens if you are missing assignments? Do you just get off the hook? In order to respond to this question, I want to first say that I avoid giving busy work. Every assignment I give will directly relate to the learning targets and the skills you need for the ECA. 
it is important to me that you do every assignment I give you. But I don't want your grades to only reflect your behavior. So rather than giving zeros or taking off points if you do not have assignments done on time, you will receive a lunch detention. Excessive missing assignments may result in Friday after school detention. But if you get your work done on time, you'll get rewards in this class. So you're not off the hook for not doing homework. You'll have a behavior punishment for a behavior problem. However, if you do not have any assignments to turn in to me for a particular standard when progress report time comes, I will be forced to give you an incomplete until you have some sort of evidence on how you are doing at a particular standard. This is why it is important to do your work and keep your work organized in your binder. If keeping organized becomes a problem, we will meet together to discuss how I can help you stay more organized. Second, even after watching this video, you might feel confused about this system. This makes sense. It is a complete change from what you are used to. I anticipate that it will take a few progress reports before everyone makes sense of this system. And that's okay. We will learn about this system together as we go along. And if you or your parents have any issues with it, please let me know. This is my first year as a teacher doing standards-based grading, and I would love to have feedback so that I can make it work best for all of us. Most of all, I am really excited about the potential this system has in rewarding your improvement and tracking exactly what you are learning. This system will also keep me accountable to make sure that everything we learn relates to a specific learning target and helps you toward passing the ECA. I hope you all have a wonderful school year and I look forward to see how you improve in your English skills this year.